Okay, um, I'm going to bank a few of these because I don't want to overwhelm people and start s slamming the uh, people that have been nice enough to subscribe already with four or five videos a day. But I do have a lot of ideas that I've been working on. I'm out here on my porch again, my, my lanai or whatever you call it. Um, if you see in the corner, my laundry's drying. So it's a good time to do a video. Another reason I'm going to bank this is because... I don't want the whole channel to be just media related stuff. This is a biography I read by Patrick Stewart, Jean-Luc Picard, or Professor X, if you're younger. And it's a really good biography. I really loved it. Um, when it comes to celebrity biographies, of course, one of the first questions for me is always, did they really write it themselves? And I my intuition tells me he wrote this himself. So at the start of the, the pandemic, he had a lot of time, like a lot of people in the entertainment industry. There was no acting jobs. There was no theaters were, were closed, as well as productions. And he was uh, asked to write his autobiography. And it's a substantial book. It's a really good read, even if you know a lot about Patrick Stewart, even if you know a lot of uh, trivia about The Next Generation, Star Trek The Next Generation. There's a lot in there that's good because his early life is very interesting. I'd say the first half of the book covers his before he made it, made it to Hollywood and before he became the captain of the Enterprise. He started out in theater, of course. I think people know that. He comes from a time. He comes. I don't know if. This, people who are English will have a better idea, but I get the impression this kind of era, this is like pre-Thatcher England that he grew up in, and in, in which he trained to become an actor, and he wasn't from a posh family or anything like that. He's from the north of England. He was able to take advantage of uh, social state, social network, art support that doesn't exist in the West anymore. I, 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 it definitely doesn't exist in the United States. Maybe in some form it exists in England, but it really doesn't seem like it does, where he was able to pursue his interests in theater, and he got, in the, at the uh, time he was starting, there was a lot of regional theaters too, so he kind of was a journeyman actor for many years. And a lot of ups and downs in his, in his life, in his professional life, you know, he'd get, he'd, uh, he went to school, he went to school with uh, Brian Blessed, was one of the other famous actors that he kind of studied with, and he, and he was able to go, right, even as a young man, 18, 19 years old, and to get these, to get parts in regional theaters, and sometimes he'd get a big part, sometimes he'd get a small part. He'd work for a, a very sort of a cheap, low-budget theater and he'd get uh, big parts there, play a leading man or like a principal sort of character. Then he'd, he'd bump up to getting getting uh, signed on with a better-paying theater and have a smaller part. It's just ups and downs, ups and downs. It's very interesting. I really like... I'm a fan of the theater from way back and of Shakespeare, and I really like theater biographies. Judy Dench has one coming out next year about Shakespeare. I don't know if it's a biography or it's about her experience acting in Shakespeare or just in praise of Shakespeare, but I want to read that. I, I, I don't know. I've always liked some of these actors' biographies and theater uh, biographies. I read Stanislavski's My Life and Art, which is very interesting. I read that because of, of Anton Chekhov, uh, you know, and his involvement in theater, and, and I just wanted to see how people... Uh, approach that. U Uga Hagen's book, uh, uh, what the hell is Uga Hagen's book called? Defense of Acting? No, it's not called that. And I don't know. Uga Hagen, she was a famous acting teacher. Her book is worth reading even if you have no interest in becoming an actor just because she came out of that Stanislavski method school and I like the history of theater and I like to you know, Theater of the Absurd was a, a survey book I read early on about uh, experimental theater in in uh, Europe. And there's Antoine Artaud's book on theater. So 
it's safe to say it's a subgenre I like to read, even though I don't read a lot of nonfiction. So the first half is just that. Even if you were to pick it up and with no interest in Star Trek, the first half is very interesting. The Star Trek, then he gets to Hollywood, and the Star Trek uh, reminiscences are kind of more more well known about how he had trouble, you know, kind of fitting in with the work ethic of the show and and all that, and you know how he kind of mellowed as a person, just being part of this ensemble. And it's it's not. Uh, it's kind of a down and dirty autobiography. Actually, he's very honest about stuff, about problems in his life, and and you know, and just great anecdotes. And it goes all the way up through the pandemic, which I thought was very interesting. He, I think, he must have started this. When was the pandemic? I have no memory for these things. Twenty twenty, I think he must have started. It's about four hundred and fifty pages. Very readable. Like I said, my intuition is that he wrote it himself, or you know, with maybe the amount of editing, editing that famous people when they write their autobiographies get, but not, not a pure ghostwriter because his only other sort of main job outside of school was a couple of years he worked as a reporter, as a journalist, when he thought it wasn't really going to work out as acting. So he, acting. And there's some interesting stories about his time as a journalist too in his very early 20s. So he knows how to write. And I would really recommend it on on that form too and then he goes uh you know he does cover his whole career like i said he covers his theater he covers there's a very famous scene a few years ago he was in a, a version of macbeth which i guess is based on a stage uh version then they did a a filmed version which you can find it's so good with uh, patrick stewart so patrick as macbeth and um there's a wonderful there's a wonderful wonderful inventive staging of a certain scene in that in that play and I always remarked on it and what I found out reading this book is everybody remarks on it so he goes through the pr rehearsal process and how they um, how they developed it if you've seen that Macbeth you probably know the scene I'm talking about and if you read the biography you'll, you'll find some interesting background to that maybe he's talked about it in interviews okay looks like the construction starting up I do want to recommend the book. I don't know if I'm going to do thumbnail, thumbnails anymore. I don't know when this is going to come out because, like I say, I'm, I'm going to try and bank some. The Internet's been up and down. I'm still in Saranda, Albania, as I do this. Uh, here's a drawing of Patrick Stewart. does not look like him very much, but, you know, I'm, I'm an amateur, so you can see I, I have this habit of always drawing the head too small. They always tell you, you know, the eyes are in the middle of the head. They always tell you that in every kind of writing, uh, drawing course. But, you know, I forget. Or I started in the wrong part. I started with the ear. I always start with the wrong part of the head. It doesn't really look like him, so I kind of redo the head. Might use it for a thumbnail. I did a thumbnail before of Mary Shelley. I don't think anybody recognized that it was Mary Shelley. Uh, or I might just quit doing the thumbnails, because... I don't know, they... If, if you do a good thumbnail, then I feel like people click through and might be disappointed at the general low pr overall production values. If I do a bad thumbnail, does it really help? So, I don't know. I probably will do a thumbnail for this one. I, m I might quit doing them. And uh, I don't know how I got off on that topic. So, Patrick Stewart, Making It So. Read it if you're slightly interested in Star Trek. If you're very interested in theater, the history of theater, contemporary theater, uh, if you like stories about growing up in rural England or regional England, north of England, you know, during World War II, I think it was born in 1940, he had some you know, tough stuff in his childhood, which he's talked about before, some tough fa family di dynamics, which are, you know, he doesn't hit you over the head with them. It's a very honest, open, and inspiring biography and you just you just get a really great sense of a man so that's my recommendation and we'll talk again this is pete bookless pete talking about books as usual goodbye